What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Bison Trading Show. Coming at you live from the Bison Trading Labs. We want to say thank you to everybody that tuned in tonight to our live market analysis session where we break down all of the hottest pairs going around for the day. We might break down some crypto, some stocks, options, bonds, forex, whatever it is, we cover it. If it has a chart, we trade it. If you don't know, I'm half of the Bison Trading Show crew. I go by the name of Titrays Futures, and I'm here with my co-host. You know who it is. It's your boy, D-Guy, a.k.a. Pro Financial, man. I just want to appreciate everybody who pulled up. You know what time it is. Pull your pen and your piece of paper. We about to lock in. And without further ado, we have a great show lined up. Let's finish off the week on a strong note. And with that being said, everybody, like Darren said, make sure you have your pens, your paper, and your notepads. Because today we will be going over a couple of different market nuggets that we might not have necessarily included in some of our last streams. So that's a little bonus that we have added in there for you guys. So stay tuned. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So... As we normally do, let's start off with some of our favorite pairs. We have today, I will be going over the US 30, otherwise known as the Dow Jones, and I'll be going over the Forex currency pair, Dollar Swiss. So let's start with US 30, the Dow Jones, which is basically just a collection of the 30 best companies in the United States that gives a pretty accurate representation of what's going on in the economy and what's going on in the stock market. And as we can see, looking at it from the daily chart, prices have been making pretty much for the most part higher highs and higher lows coming off of this low of about 18,900 back in March when the pandemic hit. But ever since that time, the market has been doing what it typically tends to do. Like if we pull it out to a weekly chart, we can see that the Dow Jones has a historical pattern of going up. So more likely than not, the Dow Jones should be making up moves. And if we drop back down to the daily and look at what we're doing in our current times and situations, we seem to be doing exactly that, making an up move. So let's zoom in to where we are currently. So right now we can see that we've been making sort of what looks like a, a pretty decent flag. If you would consider this the poll that started on October 30th, a couple of days before the election, we had a huge run up. Like look at these days here. We had one, two, three, four, five, five straight up days. Almost had a six straight, but close enough. And then we had another up day on the seventh, eighth, and ninth days. So over the course of nine days, we had eight up days, one down day. That's a very strong flag. That means that prices for the most part went straight up. So what we wanna focus on is what comes after that pole formation. We see the flag trending upwards, right? So we know that whenever we see that, a flag pattern, we know that we are definitely for sure in an uptrend. Notice also how the start of this flag, which is also the start of the next leg of this up move, also lined up with this previous bottom from over here at around 26,500. It broke past it a little bit and ended up coming back to test this tweezer bottom over here all the way back from the end of July on, uh, I think that's July 30th, 2020. So that goes to show you that nothing on the chart is random. When prices move, they're moving for a reason and they're moving to a specific destination. Us as traders, it's our job to determine where the market is going to go and how we want to trade it as it goes there. So if we move on and kind of zoom in on what we see here, what we can see is we can see the market making higher highs and higher lows. And that's one of the things that I wanted to focus on today is a topic called market structure. Because, and well, before I explain why it's important, let me explain exactly what it is. Market structure is simply the makeup of any financial market and how it moves in terms of time and in terms of price. Now, within market structure, you have three specific things that you wanna look for, and it's three specific ways that prices move. Prices are either one, in an uptrend, two, 
in a downtrend or three they're in a consolidation range bound formation which means simply that they're moving back and forth back and forth between the upper price and between the lower price and they can't break above the highest price and they can't break below the lowest price and then eventually before long prices start trending again and they either trend upwards or they trend downwards after they break out of a consolidation pattern so those are the three things that you want to remember uptrends downtrends consolidation periods so since we're looking at us 30 which we know is a pair that typically has a a good tendency to go up let's talk about market structure in terms of uptrends so when you're thinking about what an uptrend is you want to look for a couple of specific things and let's break this chart down to the hourly so we can get a better look at this all right let's hmm, let's see what's better the hour or the four let's go with the four hour chart so in terms of an uptrend the first thing you want to look for is higher highs and higher lows now higher highs and higher lows are pretty simple to understand they're they're not pretty much they're not any more complicated than what the name suggests a higher high means that prices at the close of a certain candle made a higher price than the previous high that was made in the past history of whatever chart that you're looking at so if we look at the Dow Jones the US 30 let's start from this point down here at November 19th we can all agree and all see that this is a low point on the chart in terms of market movements now actually scratch that we're not gonna start from up there let's start all the way from down here October 30th which like we were saying before this was the start of this long pole that we're looking at right now so let's keep that in mind okay and also just a quick reminder make sure you guys send this stream send this stream out to your friends at least five to six people tell them that we're over here dropping knowledge that we're dropping game and that they need to tune in if they want to learn some more good things about trading and become profitable and more consistent traders just make sure you do that for us and uh and tell them that we're going over higher highs and higher lows i bet you that'll get them to come so <laughs> If we start from down here where the polls started on October 3rd, on October 30th, excuse me, this was the run up before the election. Notice how as prices ran up, the election was somewhere in here on November 3rd. The move started a couple of days before. So if we're looking for higher highs and higher lows, the first thing we want to do is spot out a bottom in the market, which means that in order to find a bottom, you have to see prices moving down so the last high was made up here on october 12th since that point prices moved further down making lower lows lower highs all the way until they got to this low point at around let me move this real quick at around twenty six thousand two hundred and fifty right around here now notice prices didn't go any lower than that point so that qualifies as a solid market bottom okay so that's the first step in identifying an uptrend first you find the bottom the trend has to start from somewhere once we find that the next thing we want to do is follow the chart and follow the price action so let's move up from this bottom level we push all the way up to around 27,000 and then boom look prices reach 27,000 but they don't break above it they actually push down a little bit so at that area where they made that top that's considered a market high for that specific time period so this would be the high at 27,000 so then you follow that high down and you keep following it across and look at where we come to we come to another area on the chart where prices reverse and continue going up now that area will also be important because this area is a low right if this was the high and prices push down and then reverse that means that this area the second area is the low and notice how this low in comparison to the low that we started from the price over here is higher than the price at the low where we originated so that 
in context in terms of definitions means that you made a higher low now when you're in an uptrend the things that you want to look for are these higher highs and higher lows because those indicate to you that the market is moving how it's supposed to is moving in waves ebbs and flows the market moves up and it moves down and uptrends and downtrends but in an uptrend the up movements are always going to be larger than the down movement than the down movements and over the course of time through the ebbs and flows in the market when you look at where prices started from compared to where they closed from prices will be higher and you will see an uptrend and this is how uptrends are formed with higher highs and higher lows so when you see a series of higher highs like this one and higher lows like this one start to form that indicates to you that you are in fact in an uptrend so let's follow prices and go up to the next high that we can find so we keep going up 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 all the way until we get to the top of these two tweezer tops up here at these two wicks from of course election day november 3rd also notice how if we follow this level to the left it lines up perfectly with a previous high that happened earlier on the chart this high over here came from october 27th so like we said earlier nothing in the market is a coincidence prices are always moving and they're trying to find a destination so back to these wicks right once we hit these wicks look at what happened over the next three days prices eventually worked their way back down to this level at around 27,050 or 27,070 in between those two levels that made a higher low because if we look at the low of this wick right here and we compare it to the low that we had most recently this high on the right side is higher excuse me this low on the left on the right side is higher than this low previously made which is also higher than this other low where we started from so if you kind of look at it a little bit a little bit it's moving in a it's moving similar to a a pair of stairs where this is the first flight this is the second flight at the next higher low this is the next flight of stairs at the next higher low so that's how prices move they move up and they move down and the uptrend your up moves are always going to be larger than your down moves and another thing to point out just kind of harping on the the point about how prices are not random and they always move to a certain place look at where this wick the bottom of it lines up follow it over to the left it lines up with the first high the first higher high that we made on the chart that's not a coincidence that's actually another part of market structure whenever markets pull back in the uptrend more than likely prices are coming back to test the higher high that was previously made so whenever you see a pullback happen that's a very important level that you should look for find out what price the higher high is at mark it off and if you see prices touch that level and bounce off it could be a signal that prices are moving higher in the future so if we take prices up from the bottom of this low and continue following the action on the chart we see that prices you could say they made another higher high right here notice how the high that was made right here also lines up with this small little gap over here that's the destination that prices were moving to on that day and then prices pushed down they made another higher low right notice how the low point for this wick lines up with the high point that we just passed this was the last higher high the next higher low it's always going to line up well not always but most of the time would line up with the past previous high which also happened in this same area so let's continue following the prices up we see more of the same here's another higher high if we look to the left as we expect it lines up with a previous high from before that's a good thing that shows you that the market is moving the way that it's supposed to now boom let's follow this wick right here now if we follow this over to the left it lines up with this previous high so everything is moving in tandem as it's supposed to prices are making higher highs higher lows and the higher lows are simply coming back to test the higher highs that were once made in the past now as we follow the chart up we see more of the same we get this huge exhaustion wick candle right here and an exhaustion candle simply means that you usually have a large huge move on the chart but 
it's not sustained meaning that when prices close they don't continue to move in the direction that they were before so as we see on this candle this candle alone This candle alone was 1,357 points, 4.7%. And that's on a four hour candle, one candle. That's a huge move for that type of time period, huge. Sometimes you won't see a 5% move in one month. So to see it in one day is extremely rare. And we know that buying strength was just overzealous for whatever reason during that day. Now exhaustion just simply means that all the buyers that wanted to buy already bought in. And if there's no more buyers left in the market, the only people left are sellers, which is a good re which is a, a one of the reasons why you see prices continue down after this exhaustion candle forms. Now look where they pull back down to. They pull back down. Now they don't test a high that was previously that was previously made on the way up. Nope, that didn't happen this time. But if we look to the left, let's follow this low all the way over and look at what we run into. We run into these previous areas that were also all time highs at one point. So back in October, these were the highs. So we come all the way back to November a month later and prices from four weeks ago are still important and are still being tested. The market is always moving to a destination as traders it's up to us to determine where those prices are going and we use market structure to help to help us determine that and help us make better decisions about how we want to move in the future so let's continue and follow the chart to the right notice how prices move up they come back to test this previous high that was made after this wick candle was formed right so they make sort of a double top but not really they push back down and they make a double bottom you have the first bottom here on the left on November 9th, the second bottom here on the right from November 12th. So boom, in this case, just like over here, prices did not pull back to the last high. Sometimes you'll see that because in an uptrend, typically you want to see higher highs and higher lows. But sometimes you'll run into situations like these where you see a higher high, but it'll come back and make an even low. So if you see an even low, that's OK. If it's even with a previous bottom that's been formed before, that's not anything to worry about. As a matter of fact, it's something that you should look for, something that you should be happy to see, because that indicates that a double bottom is forming on the chart. Now, a double bottom is a, a very bullish reversal signal. It usually comes at the end of a pullback. And if you see the support hold up at the double bottom level, that means that more than likely prices have a higher chance of moving up in the future, which is what we see happen in this situation right here. We see the first double bottom get made. The apex gets made. The second bottom gets made. And then, boom, prices move higher. And look where they come back to. They come back to test the top of this wick over here. Not a coincidence. Prices are always moving to find a place to rest at. It's like a it's like a person. You move from one place to the next. You might move from your house to your job, right? And then you take a break. You stay at your job for a minute and then you move on to your next area. Markets are the exact same. They move, they move, they move. They get to the place that they need to be. They chill out for a while and then they make their next move. So as we continue to follow prices as they continue down, we have another, I would call this a low right here. It doesn't really line up with too much of anything. It crosses through this high over here from before, but eh, not too significant. Sometimes that's what you see. But notice how this nothing level looking to the left, it was nothing. But as prices continued in the future, that level actually acted as resistance over here. When we look at this little consolidation pattern that happened, notice how this consolidation patterns resistance was at the bottom that was made over here that looked like nothing. So even when you look at a chart and you say this level doesn't make sense, that's because it just doesn't make sense right now. Keep studying your chart and eventually that level will come back into play. And for the most part, we didn't make any higher highs or higher lows after that. Just little minor ones, but that's nothing too serious. We don't really want to consider that. 
because like I said before, you have cycles in the market. This was the uptrend. And then after prices trended up, they found this top over here at 30,200 between 30,000, excuse me, they found the top between 30,200 and 30,300. And they bounced back and forth, back and forth in between that area. And that, my parent, my friends and my people, is what you want to call a trading range. Like I was saying before, prices find a top line and then they find a bottom line and then they just trade back and forth, back and forth in between it. And as traders, when we see that type of action forming, we have to also analyze the overall context of the market so we can get a better understanding of what that range means. Now, if the trend was already up and you run into a resistance consolidation type of pattern, more than likely, you probably would see prices break out in the same direction that the trend was moving in. Since the trend was moving in the upward direction, it would be logical for us to expect this consolidation range to eventually break out to the upside and make new all time highs. And that's just a little quick lesson on market structure in terms of uptrends. Now you also have market structure in terms of downtrends, but with this chart in the US 30, we know that indexes have a tendency to move up. So you have down moves on indexes and things like that, but they're not really all that sustainable. So in terms of down moves and how we want to analyze downtrends, we want to look at that on the dollar Swiss. That's the next pair I want to go over. But for US 30, I just wanted to focus on higher highs, higher lows, and how that ties into uptrends and how uptrends tie into the overall market structure. Remember, market structure is uptrends, downtrends, consolidation patterns, right? We just went over the uptrend. Um, also, I just want to give a little forecast and kind of figure out where prices will be going in the future. So let's bring up our support and resistance levels. Now, for everybody that missed the last class, we were talking about how prices made this gap on Sunday night. We know that gaps are always going to be important levels, especially when they're made at the beginning of the week, because that sets the tone for what's going on Monday through Friday. And of course, we have the same situation formed with this gap on US 30. We had the gap open at around 30,200 between 30,200 and 30,180. So let's follow the low of this wick right here and follow it all the way across. Notice how it acts as support when prices came over here on December 15th. It got broken through. It came back, it tested 30,100, which was a key support level. So we should expect that type of level to get hit. And then that was just an anomaly. You see how prices only wick down to that level? Just to test it real quick. The seller said, hey, buyers, y'all are getting a little bit too excited right now. Let's bring you back to reality. Let's shoot down to this 30,100 level and see if you're really strong about your buying convictions. Buyers were strong and were confident in their positions. They bought more at these levels and there was more buyers and sellers, which is the reason that prices continue to move back up. So notice how once prices move back up, they move back into this supporting range. So this support level at the gap got broken once on a flash, but then that level was reclaimed and it held up as support once more going forward. So prices pushed up and they came all the way back up to this level up here. This is the 30,300 level. Now this is a level that we were talking about earlier in the week and saying how this level was acting as a strong resistance and a strong supply zone. For whatever reason, when prices get up to this level, they cannot break through it. Buyers are taking profits and sellers are shorting the market at that level for now. So we know that that's strong resistance. But since the trend is up, we are betting on eventually that level being broken. It's not a matter of if, but just a matter of when. But we have to be patient until we see what we like. But going back to what the gap was doing, the gap held up as support all week long. Now, once prices tested this level of resistance, of course, as we expected, they did not break through. They pushed back to support. They tried to break through one more time. They couldn't do it. So that's telling you and giving you more confirmation at this resistance level. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and put a line here. Boom, just like that. This resistance level at 30,350 is strong. 
it's not getting broken through for the moment so then prices tried one last time to break through that level they could not do it and then look where prices pulled back down to they're on their way they passed the 250 level of support okay so we know more than likely they probably are coming back to test this level of support that was established by the gap that was made on Sunday night. So if we see prices come back to the 30,175 level and we see a bullish reversal pattern off of that level, which shows that that level is in fact being respected as a level of major support. And we see price, price excuse me, we see prices bounce, reclaim this level at 250, then we could possibly look for a long trade at least back up to this resistance level and uh for the most part i would say that's one of the simplest trades on this chart that you could take you know i, I think that's one important thing about trading you don't want to you don't really want to force something that's not there you want to look at the chart and if it's a good trade on the chart you won't have to look for too long the trade is going to pop out at you and you'll say oh support level at the gap prices are coming back to it okay let me wait and be patient if i see what i like when prices get there then i will take the long and overall that's the move that i am looking for i know that this 30,100 level is strong and also this 30,000 level is strong right now i'm not considering those levels because of how far away they are but i know that the markets can do anything so since these levels are far in terms of the one hour chart if you look at it from a daily chart, let's straighten this up a little bit. Let's hide all of this for just a quick second. So if you look at it on a daily chart, these levels that we had, they don't seem that far away. Because if you look at prices here, you say, well, the prices are here right now. They could easily come back here. So that's another reminder of not getting so deep in the forest that you can't see the trees sometimes you could be so close up on a tree you say wow this tree is amazing but you forget you're in a you're in a forest full of trees so just remember to keep an open perspective and remember where you are on the chart we're on a one hour time frame so in terms of this move happening maybe tonight and eh, i don't know but maybe by the end of january those levels could get hit again but as far as the the current movements for right now I would have to key in on this 175 level. If prices get there and we see bullish reversal signals, I'm probably going to look for the long trade and go long at that level and probably try and take it. I would have my first profit target at 250. My second, my second profit target, I wouldn't put it at 350 because that's all the way at the top. I would probably put it somewhere at 325 because I want to get out early. I like the front run. Front running is basically a technique in the market where you get out before a major level is hit. So if I know the major level is 350 and I know that everybody on the chart sees the same level, I don't want to get out there because that's the obvious level to get out at. All of the smart money, they'll probably be getting out at 340, 330, 320. And then everybody that's trying to just be greedy and hold on for every single last pip, they'll probably try and hold it for 350. And the reason I don't hold it all the way to those to those levels is because it's been so many times when I trade it. It's been so many times where my profit target might be up here at 358. Prices will come all the way to 352, six pips away, and then reverse, come back and stop me out at break even. And those are one of the, the most frustrating trades that you could have because you literally had it right there in your hand and then it slipped away so that's a lesson that i learned over time and it taught me just get out a little bit early yes you do have to sacrifice some pips but it's worth it because the moves that you miss where you give everything back those moves wouldn't even pale in comparison to what you get if you just take what you have when the market offers it to you so overall let's look at that 175 level if it holds up and take the long trades but overall, uh, I think for me, that pretty much covers it for the Dow Jones. Darren, what's your thoughts on this pair? So for me, <clears throat> I would definitely have to try to follow uh, market uh, market structure in the overall direction of the uptrend. So go down, go to the, I, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the top down method. So go ahead and start at the monthly. 
Okay, here goes the monthly. And hide the SMAs. Got you. The 20 and the 50, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. We got a big push-up through both of the SMAs. The market doesn't really touch both SMAs not too often. Look like the last time it did touch both SMAs, that probably had to have been the pandemic. Yep, that was around March, May. Yeah, yeah. yeah it had to have been the pandemic. Um, so go down to the weekly. Look like the market is definitely fixing itself back up. The 20 just crossed over the 50 on the weekly, and it looked like it just broke previous highs as well those highs and that high as well so drop down to the daily yeah so i would have to just with those three analysis of the month uh, monthly weekly and daily and understanding that the market uh, had a big push up after it recovered after the pandemic it looked like it's forming a flag formation and like tiberius said a flag formation is definitely an uptrend um, if we can get it to respect major levels, if you can unhide your support and resistance, uh, drop down to like the two hour. Straighten it up. Yeah, so I would I would be on the side with Tiberius and and wait for the the long move to happen. If it can respect the quarters, uh levels on the market which means the 25 50 75 and the whole will come look like we're coming down to the 75 if it can come down to the 75 and respect the area i would definitely want to go ahead and hop in for the long go down go to like the three minute let's see where it's is it is prices is actually at <laughs> so as you can see right now could be a good area to hop in for the long, but you want to make sure um, you wait for higher highs to happen before you hop in for the long. So as of right now, it looked like the market is respecting the 20, staying really close. Um, it has an inverse flag formation right in front of us, right off the um, 20 SMA. It did a big bounce off. So if we can get another respect at the next quarter level, which is probably 20, is that 25? No, it's like 337. If we can get a respect there, I would definitely wait off on the long move. But if the market comes back up and breaks through both of the yellow and the blue, then I would uh, consider to hop in for the long. But until higher highs, one is correct, uh, it starts to formate. The market breaks both uh 20 SMA and 50 SMA and break previous highs, then I will go ahead for the long. Until those three line up, I wouldn't be looking for the long. I would still let the short sellers complete the last little bit of pips that they have and then wait for the market to correct itself. Okay. And that's on a three minute, right? Mm -hmm. And so just just a little side question real quick out of all of the different time frames if you could pick two of your favorites what would you say that those would be my two top favorite time frames mm -hmm. it'd be hard to say that i can only choose two right. but if i guess if i had to choose two it would be the daily and the one minute oh wow that's a that's a pretty uh a pretty wide range what made you pick those two because i like to look at the bigger time frame like the daily yeah. to see what direction the market is overall going and then i'm going to use the minute to see how high or how low prices are to try to hop in for the buy low sell high theory so oh, okay. you know gotcha. if i know if i know that the overall trend is up and i drop down and i'll go over to my minute chart and say, for instance, we're looking at U30. If prices are up at 30, 33, you wouldn't want to try to buy in at that price. Okay. You would want to kind of wait to where the market is at right now, or maybe even lower. Look for higher highs to create. Look for the market breaking SMAs and breaking previous highs. Then that should be confirmation 
to happen for the long. I hope everybody is taking notes out there. Major dream alert. Major knowledge being dropped right now. So if you had to pick two time frames, which ones would you pick? Oh, man. Like you said, that's a hard choice to make because I think it really depends on what type of move you're trying to get. If you're trying to get a 10 to 20 pip move or 10 to 20 point move, you might just be cool looking at the hour and looking at the four hour because those are probably the time frames where you could easily find a move like that. But say you wanted to do some longer term trading and like uh, let's do let's do some swing trading. I would say you might have to choose the daily and the four hour or maybe even the daily and the weekly because you need to get a bigger perspective and see what the market is actually doing in the intermediate and the longer term so you can help make a good decision on what you want to do in the present. But if I had to pick two, I would say the one hour chart and then the five minute chart. I would use the hourly chart to find the overall direction of the longer term trend because i think with the hourly chart it gives you a good mix of both worlds where you can see what's going on on the lower time frames but if you zoom out and keep scrolling it'll eventually give you a, a pretty good idea of, of what the longer term trend is doing as well so you can use the hour to kind of gauge what's going on on both sides and then when you so the hourly chart would give me my my overall direction of price. So it's either going up, it's either going down or it's consolidating. And then I would drop down to my five minute chart and look for my entries. I use the five minute chart because for me, that's just the most comfortable. All the ways that I've studied, when I study the markets, I use the hour and the five. So I stick to what I know and I trade off of the fives. Now I use the fives to kind of get a deeper picture of what I saw on the hour. And then I know I said I, I only can choose two pairs, I mean two time frames, but I gotta I gotta add that extra one and say one minute. Cause as as you know, I don't know if everybody else knows, but one minute charts are some of my favorites, especially when it comes to trading futures, because you get a very detailed look of pretty much every tick and every price movement that goes on in the market. And I know for some traders that may be a lot of information to take in, but for me, I like that type of stuff because it's no stone that goes it's no stone that goes unturned what i see on the hourly is a combination of everything i saw from the 15 the 5 and the one minute chart but the beauty about the one minute chart is that you can see everything as it happens i can see uh the bottom for this hourly candle starting to be formed on the one minute on the one minute it's a v pattern reversal on the hourly chart it's more of a, a long tail wick so I like the one minute because it really lets you see everything. So if I had to pick them, I would give the one minute, five minute, and the hourly. But I guess since I added an extra one, you can add an extra one too. I was about to extra. say, like, word, word, bro, my boy just slipped that third one smooth on in there. I'm like, word, bro, you said two. You, I told you I couldn't pick two. And you say, you know what? I'm going to pick three. Because <laughs> so now, okay, so now if I could pick three, it would be the weekly. No, it would be the daily still daily the four uh the daily the hour and the one minute nice i feel like the good thing about all those time frames is that they give you a good scope of every time period you get the short term the intermediate and the long term with all three and i would say for all the traders out there you should find something like that as well you don't necessarily have to use the same time frames that we use because every trader is unique and every trader thinks about the market in their own different ways. So find what works for you. Just make sure that whatever time frames you use, you use something that gives you a good scope on what's going on right now, a good scope of what's going on in the medium term and a good scope of what's going on in the long term. So that way you can have a good idea of the overall market picture. You don't want to just get too focused on one specific time frame.
But overall for the Dow Jones, I think that's pretty much all I have. Darren, you see anything else that's worth noting? Um, Go to the hour. Okay, hourly. No, I don't really see nothing else. Um, I just really see, like you pointed out, that gap. Um, we pointed out the major levels. Um, actually, see how many pips it is from, um, from like the say if the say if the market respected the seventy five level, which which it looked like it kind of did. No, actually, it didn't. No, it's still at the fit up at the fifty. What quarter? What level is that at? Is it at now? The price. Oh, at 20. Well, it just bounced off of 25. The, the 25, yep. Now it's moving okay. up towards the 50. Okay. So see how many pips it is from where we're at right now at the 25 up to the 58, where the top of the structure. That's about 132 points. Okay. So yeah, that's that's all I see. It looks like it's it's just really respecting those quarter levels. So it, it looked like it respected the 25. If, if it can stay above that 25 area, I can definitely see in it coming all the way back up to the 30, 350. But like you said, I wouldn't ever wait hold it up that long to that long. I'll probably bring it uh, take profit down at the 25. I agree, definitely. And uh, oh, yeah, one more thing. I know you was on a two hour chart earlier. I wanted to point something out. Notice how this 50 level, the 50 moving average is not too far away from a major quarter level, which is the 175. 30,175 is right here. The moving average is about 10 pips higher. So that goes to show that most indicators in the market line up with certain major levels of support that we can find from looking at market structure and what it's actually doing. So we actually knew that this level that was formed off of the gap was important. And notice how that level also runs in line with where the moving average is right now. Charts work in tandem. It's like a it's like a timeless watch. Like what's a what's a good watch? Like a Patek. How all of the parts of the watch move together in unison. That's exactly what happens on charts. And that's exactly why we need to understand market structure and understand that that right there, market structure, is the key to understanding everything about the market. It's the foundation. If you want to build a house, you have to lay the groundwork first. You can't build the attic and then work your way down. You have to start with the foundation. So in the markets, your foundation is market structure. And then once you understand market structure, you move how you want to and then you build on top of that in your own creative, unique ways as an individual trader. And uh, with that being said, I think that kind of wraps it up for US 30, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's let's move on to our next pair. You know, the topic tonight is market structure. Remember that the three parts of market structure are uptrends, downtrends, and consolidation periods. So with the US 30, we kind of talked a little bit about uptrends and a little bit about consolidation periods. Now, with the dollar Swiss, as you can already see, I mean, this thing is on a, a mean tear to the downside. And it's been doing that since way back, since at least March or April of 2019. So around April 25th, 2019, prices reached a high up here at a dollar and two cents. Ever since that point, they just been falling through the floor. They fell all the way down to a low at 92, right? You think that would be the low? No. Prices continued to move even lower. And now, right now, we're trading in the 88s. So in the course of a year, prices moved from $1.02 to 88. That's phenomenal. Like in terms of percentage return for a Forex pair, that's a pretty good trade. Now let's let's see how much it really was. About a 13% move. So if you have leverage, some people have 1 to 50, some people have 1 to 500. 
but with any amount of leverage that you have a 13 percent movement in the course of a year and a half that could change your life so this pair has been moving to say the least and it's a i think it's a fantastic candidate to talk about downtrends so if we want to look at how downtrends are are made up and how they relate to market structure and why they're important Let's do the same thing we did for US 30. Just do everything in reverse. And everybody out there, I just want you to kind of don't focus necessarily on the chart itself, but focus on the process that I'm using. Notice how the process is going to be the same on every chart. When I was studying market structure for the uptrend on the US 30, you started from a bottom point and you followed it all the way to a top. For the US, excuse me, for dollar Swiss, we just do the opposite since it's a downtrend. We follow it from the highest point all the way to the lowest point. Now I'm only showing you dollar Swiss and US 30, but it's thousands of pairs. It's thousands of stocks, hundreds of cryptocurrencies. It's a lot of charts that you can look at. Whatever chart you decide to use and chart up on, follow the same process. The pair may be different, but the process is the same. So when we want to identify a downtrend, the first thing we do is find a market top. So let's start from this market top that formed at the end, the I would say the tail end of the pandemic around March 24th. So we get a high between 98.56 and 99 even. So for rounding sake, let's just call it 99 even being the top of this movement. So in a downtrend, what you want to look for is the exact opposite of an uptrend. So remember the uptrend is higher highs higher lows and a downtrend we want to see lower highs and lower lows so if the high is up here at 99 we want to find the next lowest high point well actually excuse me that's backwards we want to find the next lower low so let's follow the chart all the way down until we find a reversal point boom here it is at 95 even notice how when prices hit 95 cents they bounced up and they retraced right so at the area where that bounce occurred that's what we would mark off as our lower low as a matter of fact let me just write that in there lower low okay there we go boom so this is where our lower low would be now let's just hide all of that real quick so just remember this is the lower low so now we continue following prices up we follow them up until we see the next reversal point. The next reversal point happened at 97.94. We can round that off and call that 98 even, so 98 cents. That was a lower high. And a lower high is simply where prices, when they reverse, make a high that was lower than a high that happened in the past. So the first high that we started from was at 99 even. The next high that we made was at 98 even. So it was a whole hundred pips away from even touching the previous high. So that right there indicates that you do indeed have a lower high. So now that we've seen a lower low and lower high, that's telling us that, okay, prices are either in a pullback or they may be starting a downtrend. So then you continue forward to see what happens now. Because just seeing one lower low and one lower high is not really enough. You want to see at least two of them in a row, because once you see two, that kind of starts to make a series. It starts to make a pattern. So now it's becoming something that's repeating in the market, which means that the market is, in fact, trending to the downside. So if we move to the right, what do we have here? We have not a lower low. No, we have a higher low. So that means that the market has not confirmed the downtrend quite yet. It still has room to go. It's still a fight between the buyers and the sellers. The sellers, they figured, hey, we just made a lower high. Excuse me, we just made a lower low and we just made a lower high. Let's go ahead and continue and push down and make a new lower low. But the buyer stepped in and said, hold on, not quite. Let's come back and test this previous high that y'all made before. And let's see how strong the sellers really are at that level. And that's exactly what happened. Prices reversed at 96 even. They pulled back up to test the previous high. Notice these two wicks up here, how they made a double top. And both of these were long tail candle wicks. When you see a long tail candle wick, 
that lines up with a strong level of resistance and a downtrend, that's a very strong reversal signal. On top of that, we also had the double top. So that's two things lining up in one area. And then what do prices do? They push back down to test that low. So we still have not yet made a lower low, but prices move higher. They didn't exactly make it back to this high from previously. They made a lower high at this candle right here, which was also a long tail candle wick. And then prices just kind of move sideways for a bit, move sideways for a bit, right? But notice how as we go down across this line, the highs are getting lower. Even though the lows on the low side are not breaking, the highs are getting further down every time we continue to move. So that's telling you, like, I don't know if you guys remember, but from last session, we talked about wedges and we talked about ascending triangles. This would be the exact opposite. This would be considered a descending triangle where the bottom level is holding up and it's a flat horizontal line, but the top level is continuously slanting down. It creates a wedge or a descending triangle. Now that means that prices more than likely will break to the downside and start a new down leg or continue a downtrend that was already in motion. So let's keep that in mind. Notice how the wedge is holding up, it's holding up. And that the horizontal line for the wedge was right here. Once prices broke at this level, that was our indication that, okay, the downtrend is in fact still valid. We was looking for the lower high to get made over here. That would have been textbook. But sometimes in the market, it's not going to be a, a textbook perfect picture like you see in a book because you have to realize you're dealing with humans and you're dealing with emotions. People make emotional decisions in the market. Money makes people do things that you normally wouldn't do. Before you started trading, you said, OK, I'm not going to take any random crazy trades. But then the market starts moving all over the place. You, you lose your discipline. You lose your patience. And then, boom, you make a move. You might get stopped out and then you say, ah, I knew I shouldn't have did it, but it was an emotional decision. It was hard to control yourself. So sometimes the market is not always going to move perfectly. That's what we see right here. But eventually, if the trend is strong enough and the sellers are content and they really want to push it down, they will. It's just a matter of time. And that's why I say being patient is so important. On these charts, you have to wait for the things that you want to see. Imagine if we would have tried to short it right here. Even though we were right about the initial direction, this was April 15th, where we thought about shorting. Our timing was off because if this is the 15th over here where we thought about going short and prices didn't break the actual level until June 5th, we would have been wrong for about two months straight. If you have bad risk management, you could go broke in about a month, not even that whole time period of two months. Even if you have the best risk management, if you keep taking the wrong trade because your timing is off, it's going to hurt you. So that's why I say being patient is so important. No matter how good of a trader you are, what level you are, beginner, intermediate, advanced, patience will always be an important factor when it comes to the markets. So if we get back to the chart, we can notice that, yes, this level was actually broken now. So what we were supposed to get over here when we expected lower lows we now get on June 11. So notice how this low finally gets broken. Boom. Okay. Now we have a new lower low. So the next thing we're looking for is a lower high. So prices push up, they push up. So if this was the last high that was made and prices only made it back to this point, that means that yes, in fact, a lower high was made. So we had a lower low, we had a lower high. Prices came, they tried to test this level multiple times. They traded in a range sideways for a minute, right? The range, the bottom was established at 94.25. Notice how the bottoms of these candles also lines up with the bottom of these candles over here. That's the bottom of the range. This up here at 95.25, this is the top of the range. But notice how the range kind of dwindles down a little bit. The top was up here. Then it moved down slightly a bit and then it just continued to move down, continued to move down. It finally broke past this low and it came back to test the previous low. So notice how on all of these charts, when we don't make a new lower low, 
prices usually come back to test the lowest point that they made. We saw that same thing happen over here, right? And we see the same thing happen over here on this side. That's not a coincidence. That's a very common occurrence in the market. Uh -oh. Hold on, y'all. Okay, but yes, that's a very common occurrence in the market. So once you see... Yo, D, you back? Hello? Uh-oh, uh y'all. Yeah. I think Darren got disconnected. Hold on, let's see. You hear me? Yep. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay. I don't know what happened. But, so, yeah, y'all. Now, prices finally broke past this low over here, right? So notice where they pulled back up to. They pulled back up to a level that was previously a bottom. Right? So notice how we said the bottom of the range was at 94.25 and we followed that level along these crosshairs. Notice how the high for this last level before prices broke lined up with that previous area, 94.25. That's not a coincidence. Markets always move like that. You remember how when we were talking about uptrends, we said the higher high and the higher low, when the markets do pull back, they always come back to test that higher high. Well, in a downtrend, you just flip that around. So in a downtrend, when markets pull up and they retrace, they usually come back to test the area that was a previous low. If the downtrend is, if the downtrend is valid and legit, most of the time that low will hold up as strong resistance and will be a great level to short from because usually that's where you get the biggest bounces of and the biggest reversals from. So always remember that in a downtrend, prices try and come back to test the last low that was most recently made. And that's what we saw in this situation. Prices came back, they tested this last low, this last low held up as resistance, strong resistance, and then we can see clearly after that that the trend was just straight down. This is a this is a great example of a trend that you can't get in. Every trend is not tradable. Unfortunately, it's that way. Now, if you're a savvy trader, you would have been waiting to hop in at these levels and you would have caught it like that. But notice how if you look at it from July 17th until July 31st, that's about 14 days. 14 calendar days so in terms of trading days that's about three weeks 15 days right so during that whole period all of the candles were red except for one so for the most part there were no legitimate pullback opportunities where you could hop in and actually catch this move unless you wanted to just sell at the low and hope for the best so that's why we talk about patience patience is so important sometimes even though you want to hop in on this trend, you know that you shouldn't be selling at the lowest price. So you just have to wait. You would have had to wait all the way until prices came back to make this low at 90 cents. And then you would have hopped in on the pullback up here. But you say, man, I could have caught the whole move from 94.60 down to 90 cents. That's about 460 pips. That's a very nice move. But if you catch the prices from 92.40 and you ride it all the way back down, you can ride it to about 91 even. That's 140 points. Now, no, it's not as much as this trade, but you still get a solid triple digit trade and you took the highest probability setup. And that's what it's all about. It's not really about making money. If you take, it's about, excuse me, it's not all about making money. It's about taking the best quality setups. If you focus on the best setups, the money is going to come regardless. It's a byproduct of taking the best trades. So you always want to focus on taking the least amount of risk to make the highest amount of reward. And a lot of times that requires being patient and that requires discipline. And that's what we want to focus on as traders. And that's what we come here to teach you guys. It's all about learning something every day. These charts give you a lesson whether you need it or not. It's up to you as a trader to decide whether or not you want to take it. And we just kind of come here every day to share the things that we've learned along our journey and we hope that you can learn from it too. So with that being said, overall point is focus on taking the best trade. So 
notice how when prices pull back <clears throat> and they made this high up here if we follow this to the left look at where it lines up it lines up with an area that was a previous low before when there was a downtrend over here in march this was the lowest point right here these are where prices closed at it popped all the way down to the bottom of this wick and if you follow that across notice how it lines up with these bodies over here so you can't think it's a coincidence that prices closed up here and then later on they made a wick from there prices made a wick over here before and later on they made a body i mean the market is a beautiful thing it works in unison everything lines up prices are always moving to a destination so we could have called that level just based on what we saw from over here from march 10th so notice and always remember take note that in a downtrend you always want to see prices pull back to the lowest law that's what we saw here and then for the most part prices just consolidated in a range between 92 and 90 cents and then they eventually broke out so the next thing we want to see is we want to see potentially prices come back to test this low that they broke out from at 89.80 around 90 cents so between that 20 song between that 20 pip range between 90 cents and 89.80 because as we say when we're looking at downtrends when the lower low is broken we want to see that lower low come back and get tested and if we can see that test hold up that's where we want to hop in for the short so overall that's how you understand downtrends in terms of market structure remember you want to see lower lows lower highs when you're looking for an entry point you want to see markets come back to test the area that used to be a previous low once prices test that low you want to see them potentially make any type of bearish reversal signals or bearish reversal patterns off of that level and that will indicate to you that yes that level is in fact strong and that is holding up as resistance and that will probably be a decent place to hop in for a good short trade so overall that is a downtrend and market structure darren what are your thoughts on this chart my thought on this one is definitely before like say if i didn't know anything just looking at this chart i could just say yeah it's definitely going down yeah. That's how much down it's going because I think just a person that wouldn't know how to trade, if they was to look at this chart and I'll ask them what direction is this chart going, they can say it's down. So with that said, let's start with the top down theory. So let's go to my first my ter my first time frame. Let's go to that monthly. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, and hide and hide the SMAs. Got you. All right, so just on the monthly, it looks like the 20 has begun to break over the 50. The higher the time frame, the bigger the move. Example, look when the last time the 20 broke the 50 on the monthly. How much of a move did the market make? Just simply off of the break. So that happened back in 20, uh, 2002. It broke. So actually, let's grab the ruler and let's see how many pips that is. That's got to be a monster move. A Two, monster move. 2002? 2002. So let's just, say after, let's just say after the break. Once the break happened, let's just count it at the break. All right, boom, right here. Mm-hmm. That alone is a 47% gain. Well, negative on their part, gain on your part. Because, right. <laughs> because clearly that the 20, when the 20 crosses over on the 50 on the monthly, you know you're going to expect at least more than a 20% gain on easily on a, on a move like that. So we know the 20 has just crossed the 50 on the monthly. All right, let's drop down. weekly I right, straighten it out all right so here on the weekly it looks like the how far back did the how far back did the um, SMAs cross 
I would on say the, the most recent one was right here, but if you want a major one. Not nah, the most recent one. Okay. So they crossed right here on August 19th, 2019. All right. So so we just got a break on the monthly. We dropped down to the weekly. We got an even bigger break, but it happened way before. So we know now we're clearly in a downtrend that the bears are in control. Drop down to the daily. All right, so when you usually drop down to the daily and you usually see that the day's candle that we're in is opposite of the daily trend, that usually means that the market is currently going against the market trend. Right. That means it's probably going to be consolidating maybe for the next few days. Definitely for the rest of this trading week, I feel like it's just going to be consolidating. Definitely tonight into tomorrow, it may could possibly have another drop again, but I feel like it probably has maybe one more drop in the system consolidate and i think it should be coming right back up again what's the lowest this ever uh this chart has ever been let's see so far i see 70 cents i think that might be it 70 yeah, that's it 70 okay and where we at now 88 yep so how many pips is from where we at to just the, not the wake, but just the bodies. Well, do the both, do both. I think from down here, it's probably like 1,800. Let's see, boom. Oh, yeah, 1800. so about, yeah, 1,865. And then from the from the bodies, let's see. Nine. So that's almost half. Yeah, about to say that wick is at least half. So, in my opinion, I know Ty, Ty Bears would definitely agree with me that we're definitely, me and him, not going to gamble on the other half. We'll just take our body move and just call it that because I just feel like with the wick, with that wick, it's just really just un uncertain. And I say that because go to the line chart. Where did that wick go? go it disappeared. So, what's the best, strongest area to go to in terms of the market? at the quarter level, at the 75, or 78, or 80. No, 80's at the bottom, right? Let's zoom in and really see. It's kind of, this candle opened at 80 cents, 80.56, and the low okay. was at 70.68. Okay. So yeah, that would probably pretty much be my aim on my area. I'll be looking to take profit. I probably I wouldn't really bet too much on the rest of the the other nine hundred. I mean, I feel like once it does get to that level and it begins to push a little bit more, you do have a little bit more room to run. But I would only once it gets to that low at the seventy eight, I probably would just take only another like twenty five or thirty and just leave it alone because I feel like once it gets down to that major resistance level. It has to do one or two things. Either it's going to break past that low level and continue down, or it's going to come down to that level, find an area of resistance, and continue back up. Exactly. So, um, I mean, you can make money on consolidation areas as well. It wouldn't be much. You'll just be just taking it from the top to the bottom and then from the bottom back up again. So, you know, if you do it a couple of times, you could probably make a decent, but... We want it. We're just here to catch the big moves that, you know, it's going to be floating in profit. Not one of those things is going to be in profit. And the next thing you know, it flips. So we only try to look for the really good moves. So, all right. Um, go to the daily again. So yeah, I mean, I feel like it, it, it's going to definitely, since this big at, big move continued down just now, I feel like it should pull back just because it's been going down for quite some time. I think most naturally the way the market moves, it's going to come back up, try to find an area of support up at this 20 or maybe even the 50 and then continue back down for the third leg or the last leg of the down move. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think this downtrend is pretty strong. I mean, 
Yeah, it's just really too strong to say that there's not another leg coming. Right. You but know, it's definitely his last leg, though. Yeah. At least for right now. Yeah. But I don't Until know. Couple- 2020 has been a funny year, man. You never know. Yeah, shit. We got a few more weeks left in, left in this year, man. Let's just hurry and get this year over with because it's been like one of the worst years in a long time. But yeah, I would I would drop down to the two hour. Yeah, I mean, like, look what it did just here. It looked like it just hit a nice little double bottom. Uh, market structure element that Tiberius talked about. Found an area of support, and now it's coming back up to touch the 20 SMA. If it can break up a past it just a little bit more and hit the 20, it might just do another fake out like it's done the first, second, and maybe third time. It might give you a little fake out. No, that wasn't a fake out. The fake out before that, after that one. That one, and then one all the way over. Nope, you just passed it. The fake out right there. All of them, really? Yeah. This one was a like, fake out. This one, this one, this one. I feel like this, that one was more of a, of a bigger fake out because it broke both of the SMAs. And it yeah. came down to a test. And it did a gap down. Definitely. Yeah, I didn't even see that. Whoa. Yeah, and you're getting a gap down on a two hour, like that's an automatic, like, yo, that's a sell, bro. That joint just gapped on a two? Yeah, that's major. Like, major. but look what the market did. It came came back up, filled the gap. That was your confirmation, got a rejection at the top, and now it just did a huge push down again. But the funny thing about the market is, look what it did after the 16th. It popped right on up, all the way up. But look where that line, where, where does that high line up to? When you go all the way back over, right near the gap again. So that definitely lets me know that I definitely have another fake out. It's going to come back up, probably touch the bottom of that wick. Uh, which one? Bottom that one of here. Yep, one? bottom of that one, yep, on the on a 50. Right if I can get the touch up at the either at the bottom of the wick or the bottom of the body, for sure, you can get another leg to the downside. Yeah, I like that one. And also, I see how you pointed out the double bottom too. Another thing about double bottoms is that when you see a double bottom in a downtrend, don't ignore it because markets never move one way just in total. They're never going to move straight up or it's never going to move just straight down. It's always going to be ebbs and flows. Even when the market is trending down strongly, there will be pullbacks. So whenever we see double bottoms, that's just telling us, okay, a pullback is probably coming. And sure enough, look what happened. Prices came back and they're on their way to test the moving averages. That's a fact. So overall, for Dollar Swiss, we are short. So just to recap, everybody, I want you to remember market structure. We have uptrends, downtrends, and consolidation patterns. In an uptrend, you want to see higher highs and higher lows consecutively. Ideally, you would like to hop in at an area where a low is made at an area that was usually, that, excuse me, that was previously a higher high. So you wait for a pullback that comes back to the last high that was made. Once you see prices bounce from that level and hold it up and make sure that that level has been solidified as support, then you go in for the long trade. Now on the other side, when it comes to downtrends, you wanna see lower lows and you wanna see lower highs consecutively. The more you see, the stronger the trend is. Now, when you want to hop in, the best place to hop in would be an area that used to be a last, uh, excuse me, a last low. So on this chart, ideally, we would be looking for 89.80 to 90 cents. You want to hop in at the last low. Once you find that, you see that that level has been held up and respected, then you can hop in. Consolidation zones, they trade in a range. You have a higher price and you have a lower price. So hold on, let me hide the, the SMAs for a second. 
So on this chart, an example will be this consolidation zone from 90 cents back up to 92. Prices traded in between, up and down, up and down, and then they finally broke. So overall, market trends, excuse me, market structure, uptrends, downtrends, consolidation zones, and that's it. And that's the lesson that I wanted to come through and teach for tonight. Darren also has a lesson for you. So this is like double dose night where you get two of everything. And uh, he has some good pairs coming up for you. And I'm going to turn the floor over to him. All righty. What's happening, guys? What's happening, man? It's your boy D guy. Ready to lock in with you guys. And show you a couple things and drop some knowledge on y'all. You can see my screen? Yep. All right. All right, so the first pair I definitely want to look at is SP. I've been looking at SP for a little bit for a little bit while now just because of all the big hype commotion that's been circling around the SP because most recently Tesla has been added to the S&P 500. Yeah. If you know that is a very 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 significant move to to actually build a company from ground up and then to be added into the S&P 500 is that that's like almost legendary. And he actually did it in a very, very small period of time. So I looked at this one particularly because I wanted to get in on the higher highs that it's been doing. Like, look, look, look how much highs it's been breaking. And this is one of the pair I was actually wanting to swing. I'm actually still in this one. So, but let's look at it on a top down perspective. So as you can see that the market has just been in a huge uptrend, huge uptrend. We just got the broker of the highs, I believe, early in November. We got the broker of the high. Um, then this this month's candle, December, has just formed above the close of the previous month of November. We got a big uh, exhaustion up to the upside. Very powerful to me. Because actually it was sitting at this high for a very, actually I think it was sitting down. Either it was sitting here or here for quite some time. Like I actually thought it was going to come all the way back down and try to retest this again or even worse, not worse, but worst case scenario, come all the way back down and try to touch an area down here where it last had some trouble breaking. So, and I feel like if the market, if S&P 500 ever got back down here again, it trouble. would be it, we're in trouble <laughs> so it's actually best that this pair stays in an uptrend because to me in my opinion i don't know type you can definitely correct me if i'm wrong this s p 500 you can kind of say that that's kind of based on our economy right. how the strongest 500 companies in our economy is working and are they returning uh flipping or having their ratio of return higher than their previous quarters or years as far as returns exactly. and when you look at this you can see that the economies yeah it did have like a small little down in february where our pandemic but it definitely quickly recovered came back and broke the previous high in december oh, i'm sorry february here and then had a big exhaustion up to the upside So a, a very important element that I would want to point out is the support and resistance in the flag formation. Those two formations for me has been, once I learned it, it was like, you can never really go wrong because I never wanted to be a trader that needed to rely on any one or any indicators for learning how to trade. I wanted to learn how to trade in the most simplest fashion that there was and the most simplest fashion that there is to trade is support and resistance and market structure and chart formations. So for me, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the flag formation and I'm a big fan of support and resistance. So actually, let's just drop down again. So I think I believe I, I talked to you guys, we were some somewhere around here around our last video 
I was like, you know, <clears throat> if the market can possibly break this last high over here, we can definitely get uh, some so a big another leg up to the upside. But if the market did respect this high level up here, either in this purple box or at the top of this gray box, I said it would have to come back down to this purple area where it once struggled at these high areas down here. So I was going to actually be very patient for the market to come down here into this area before it had another exhaustion up, but the market wanted to do it what it wanted to do and it shot up. But I believe I actually did call it correctly. Like it actually just blew past the purple zone. It actually came back down into this gray zone down here. Yeah. So actually, I was actually correct. It actually did come back down. I thought it was going to be just the purple box, but actually, I got I was incorrect. It actually blew past the purple box. It created a a, a gap down, and it came back up to refill it again and had a big. And that, actually, if you look at it, let me hide me hide that indicators. As you can look in between the candles, they have little gaps in between them. Like these little gaps has never really been filled yet. So, I mean, like the market could possibly come back down here to fill this, but something bad would really have to happen. God forbid, like a president or something body crazy would have to die in order for this S&P to drop down this low to try to come back and grab these buyers who missed this leg up. So let's drop down. So for me, I really wanted to hone in on the flag formation because as you can see, the S&P does favor the flag formation. As you can see, it had a big pull up a flag, had a resistance, respected it. We had another flag, a huge, a, a huge push up to the upside, came down just a little where it broke. I, I actually, when I seen this pull, I, I couldn't really decide where the flag's form uh, support would be. I actually thought it would be at this high up here. But I guess the market had other plans and, and it, the uptrend was so much or so strong that when it did come down here and broke the flag's resistance, that it gapped up again. So we had one, two, three consistent pulls within like a two, which, 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 which happened within a November, all in one day. So this happened in November 3rd, this happened November 3rd, this happened November 3rd. So you could have got two big strong up moves on the S&P strictly just off of the flag formation. But let's look at where we are now. Let's unhide the SMAs. So um, the last time I got in or that I think I was in, I was, I got in somewhere I wanted to actually hop in on the break of the highs. So I think that's where my entry would have been at here at the top, would have been my high entry, because I didn't want to just hop in like immediately into the market, like a market execution button. I actually want to, I like to get into the market off of limits and stops. And I believe like I explained last week, a stop is something that breaks through, through an area you want the market, where you want the market to enter you in and limits are entering you off of a reverse. So say if you got the broke breaking of an area, you don't get a, a complete all the way back down and you get a push back up, the market will enter you down here at the bottom. So for me, I would still have to stay on the side of buyers right now just because one, this is S&P 500. It kind of mirrors the economy. Second, it's been in a strong uptrend for ever since the recovery of the pandemic. And third, it just broke overall highs, which means now it's going to create higher high areas in which areas we never really traded in before. But I'm going to keep my stop tight not too tight. I want to give the market a little bit more room to run because I feel like this could be a good pair to kind of try to swing. Um, long as you have, you know, you're risking, you, you're doing your risk management well and not 
lotting up so much or having a higher lot size when you're swinging, it's best to probably have as low lot size as possible. So when the market goes against you, it doesn't hurt as much. But at the same time, if it does go up, you know, you can get little profits. But if you let it swing a little bit more, everyone knows the power of compounding. So. So just looking at this, I don't know where the market could possibly be going. So I like to use only one indicator, one or two indicators that kind of help me with those type of things. And one of those is the Fibonacci retracement. Uh, the Fibonacci retracement has levels. Let me show this for me down here. So you want to do it from the, the recent low up to the most recent high. So just based off the Fibonacci levels alone, um, it just broke out of the 78. It came down to retest the area in which it broke. And now we're continuing back up. So the two areas I would be trying to either hit, which is probably going to be hitting soon, is this area. But most importantly, it has room to possibly run up this high if we play it correctly. I mean, you know, the market, it's never going to go straight up to these levels. The market is the market, and it does an up and down type of thing. But I'm placing these lines here because so we can get an idea of where we're trying to go with this thing because the worst thing is trying to drive somewhere and don't know where you're going. So it's always best to try to map out where you want to go. And that's for anything in life. You want to try to plan out where, you, where you're trying to go. So now that I put the Fibonacci levels up, I have some take profit areas. So let's try to measure some of these take profit areas. This one is about 56, 56 54 points, 1.4 percent gain, 1.5 percent gain. Nice. Then we have another 4 percent gain, and then we have a 6 percent gain. So I mean, there's gains here to be made. Um, I just feel like you have to be kind of watch this just because it broke recent highs. Um, and so now we're just really just going in areas we've never traded before. So we just got to kind of monitor that and kind of keep your stop, stops kind of close. Tiberius, I know I kind of hit a couple of things. Tell me your thoughts. So I like uh, I like this market, too. I like the fact that the uptrend is pretty strong. Like we've been saying about indexes for so long is that they have a tendency to go up. Indexes love to go up because remember, you have to keep in mind what a stock index measures. It measures the overall health and uh, goodwill of the economy. So if stocks are doing well and stock prices are going up, more than likely the market is going up. And in the market, it's an inherent bias to the to the upside, as a matter of fact. And that simply means that think about what people want to do when they hop into the stock market. Most people are saying, what stocks can I buy? Most people are not saying, what stocks can I short? People want to buy stocks. So indexes have a tendency to go up and that's what we're looking at right now we can see that the trend is very strong prices bounced off of the moving average not too recently as a matter of fact that's what december december 14th so that was what a couple of days ago right yep that was actually three days ago so prices made an extreme reversal right here on the 50. now notice how when prices pull down, if you follow them to the left side, they kind of lined up with the top of that zone right there. The zone that Darren has marked up right there. Notice how prices is follow prices are following market structure. They pull back to the previous high, they touched it, and then they continue higher. And notice how that also, the 50 moving average right there, helped you along. So that was your second indicator. So not mm -hmm. only did you have the higher high, you had the moving average supporting you as well. Mm -hmm. And then boom, the third confirmation was when the, the all-time high previously was broken. Mm -hmm. So with the S&P right now, we are, see our, we are seeing a very strong uptrend. No doubt about it. So if we're looking for long trades, of course, you know, we want to buy low and sell high. So remember what we said earlier. We want to come back and we want to wait for that higher low, excuse me, that last higher high to get tested. 
So we want to find the last high. Wherever the last high is, that's where we want to go long at. We just have to be patient, wait for our trades to come to us. All right. So, yeah. So, like, um, since it had such a big exhaustion up, you know, I mean, I feel like the up move is just so powerful. I just feel like, you know, the the retracement is not going to be too big. I mean, I feel like it's just going to be just a little tiny little retracement maybe to those highs just to co confirm that it just broke those highs. But then I also have to pay attention to this these highs up here that never got broken. At the last time it came up to that area that it reversed. Yep. So but let's see why it reversed. What was here? December 17th. That was just a few. That was actually today. So actually we had a big huge gap up all the way here. This down move was just because the the gap happened down here, so it had to come back down here to grab the last little bit of orders, which it did. Yeah. But then now it's continuing back up now. So I just feel like now that these orders been grabbed, I feel like it's not gonna ever come back. Not ever, but it's just a very small chance that the market will come back down down this low again. True. So it might not even come back to that last high. Yeah, it might not even come back to that last high. Look how it's forming now. It looked like it's just had like a little tiny. Now it's about to just probably just shoot up. So I'm in a live trade on this one. So I just want to kind of swing it. I feel like if I can hold it, if I can swing trade this maybe for a few, maybe a week or two, I can. I don't know how much I would be able to get off a penny. Oh, it's going to be a good amount. The way yeah. the S&P is moving now, that would yeah. be nice. Yeah. So the jury has definitely adjourned and we've definitely spoken for the long or the move we think is, is more logical, which is the long move. Um, like me and Tiberius said, we don't really see the short move right now. The seller's going to have to just kind of take a seat right now. Like, I mean, you can do whatever you want to do. You can kind of try to force it if you want. Or you can kind of try to zoom in on a smaller time frame and maybe try to catch like a pull down to the last high. But like, as you can see, this is such a big bullish engulfing candle. It ate the last three red candles that I just don't really see it coming down to touch these last highs. So um, other than that, the jury has adjourned and that's the S&P. So the next pair I want to talk about is Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. It's been moving lately. Everyone knows that the Bitcoin has just broke the 20,000 level, which was way the way down here. It just broke it right, right down here. So look how much. If you was in a buy on this, oh my gosh. Like Great job. Not, oh, great job. Like, because that was risky. That was really risky. Because really, in all honesty, the market should have came back down again to retest. But the buyers were in the market so heavy they said, nah, forget a pullback. We stepping. And they stepped over the last high and brought it into, let's see how big of a move that is. That just happened. We're 70 days into the month. So. That's about 20% gain on your account just in 17 days. Drop down a little bit more. This, this, the sellers try to step into the market here and here. They failed. The buyers were in so much. So I feel like you can hop in for a buy. I just feel like you have to kind of be careful because, mind you, we just broke last highs. And anytime last highs get broken, it usually come, they usually come back down to touch the most recent high. So, I mean, this high, last high that happened here, this red wig came all the way back down to the bottom to retest it. So after this huge high like this, I can definitely see it coming back down here before it continues back up again. But overall, the buyers are in the market. They're heavy. They're not going anywhere. It doesn't look like right now. So going long would just be ideal in this case. I don't feel like 
a short can possibly happen in this one. I mean, like you can get a short, you can get maybe like a couple pips, a few, but I just don't see the way how strong the market is going long. I mean, down here would have been more logical to kind of hop into down either down here where these wicks were at these highs or this low where this market was. This would have been the, these prime areas to happen for the long. So if the market could possibly come back down here and touch or retest the green SMA, which it looked like it's possibly doing, we can try to enter in off of a limit. So a buy limit. So we're definitely going to try to come down short to touch one of these areas, reject it off of the resistance area at the, at the 7 SMA, and then we should get a nice reverse up or a nice exhaustion to the upside. So, I mean, the sellers, you can kind of, this will be your, probably your time. You got the kind of like trade off of the lower time frames to get your little moves. Because I mean, this was, this move just happened. You could have gotten 2% off of account. So I just feel like that's maybe as max as possibly is gonna get, unless you may have caught it over here, but this move been happened. This is only four percent because we're on a small, so we're such a small time frame. I feel like the short sellers can only get an average two percent, four percent, six percent on a short move, where the longer moves are more where the money is. So smart traders usually follow the money and understand that I wouldn't take a short trade if I know I wouldn't get that much money off of it. Whereas if I was to go long, I'm guaranteed to get profit off of it to the point where it's floating in profit. Either you can take half, take all, and maybe continue to go up. But, mm -hmm. I mean, you just want to get in and get out. You don't really want to try to become a millionaire off one trade. You want to try to be logical about it and pay attention to the structure of the market and understand that just off the 45, we have higher highs. Higher highs here off this. Matter of fact, let's see how, how big of this short move was. About 6%, another 6% move to the downside. So you have an average between 2, 4, and 6. So now that we just had another leg to the down, uh, another retracement down to this area where these last highs were, I can definitely see us getting a leg to the upside. If not to the top of the figure, I would actually kind of hold this one because we just broke 20,000. So I feel like, you know, if we broke 20,000, we can definitely break 30,000. So... Ty, tell me what you think about this one. I like the uptrend on this one, too. I think uh, Bitcoin is one of those pairs that has a lot of buying momentum behind it. I would say the same way I described the stock market as having a natural bias to the upside. I think you could say for right now, it's the same kind of same kind of buying activity with Bitcoin. A lot of people are looking to buy, and that's telling us that the trend is very strong. So I think that kind of supports the chart that we're looking at now while we see how it's just it's on a trend like it's on a major tear right now so i think that's indicating to us that yes of course look like darren said we want to be long and i think right now i like the levels that you put up there what's the top level what's the price for that one which one uh the one at the top the this top one up blue line not the top blue line you got oh this one yeah oh. Twenty nine one flat. Oh no no, I'm sorry. Twenty nine one twenty two nine eleven. Oh okay, I see it. Yeah. Twenty two nine thousand. So I'm gonna go ahead and round that up and call it twenty three thousand. I feel like I like that level that you put because that's a major level of support as well. Not only does it line up with the previous high from the left side, it's also a whole number. Like we've been talking about before on the, the stream from Tuesday, whole numbers, half numbers, and quarters are extremely important when it comes to markets and how they move. We know that those levels usually show uh, strong points and strong areas where we look for support and where we look to go long. So if we can get a level where, excuse me, if we can get an instance where prices hold up at that level, I think that would definitely be a good buying point. And as we can see right now, prices are kind of hovering around that area. So mm -hmm. if we can see some type of bullish chart patterns, maybe we see a double bottom form some type of way. 
we could go long off of this level. But I think, honestly, we've seen something good already. Because when prices pulled back into that level, it actually lined up with, I want to say that high in the middle, maybe eight pips back. Go over two more. Well, yeah, actually, you was right the first time on that wick. That kind of pops up yep, right there. Notice how when we pull it back, where we're at, the candle that opened lines up with the top of that body over there. So in essence, that's really a, a previous high area. So since mm -hmm. we, what we've been saying all night is that if we're in an area where we have prices pulled back to the last high, everything is right. So I feel like in this situation, we're pretty much all good. Yep. Yep. So like, I mean, you want to kind of just be <clears throat> weary if you're trying to take the shorter, shorter trade. But just be a logical and smart trader. Understand the money is on the longer side of things with the Bitcoin. I mean, you can also look at the lower time frames and see that they're respecting major levels. They're respecting whole numbers. They're respecting halves. Yep, they're respecting halves and they're respecting quarters. I think most mostly have these. This one is, is 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 respecting. So the fifties, if it ends in fifty, is probably going to respect it or flat. So yeah. So just to recap on this one, you want to kind of follow your support and resistance areas on this one, um, because that's one of the things that I've that helped me along the way, which I said before in my last pair when I was talking about SP about my flag formations, how that. When you see a poll, you know that nine times out of the 10, the market's going to respect that level. And with this one, with my support and resistance errors, because we pointed out, as Tiberius pointed out, that the market just pulled back to a very important area where the market struggled previously. And if, like he said before, if it respects this level right here, the last high areas that it formed, I'm sorry, the last low areas that it formed, then we should be good to continue for the long. So for me, this one, the key element for this one is support and resistance. On my S&P 500, flags are more important to me on that pair. So I think if the jury is adjourned, we can go ahead and wrap this up and begin to get in our traders talk. Do you have anything else to add on this one, Tiberius, before we? Yeah, I would just say that right now, Bitcoin is one of the strongest trends that we're looking at. I like the chart and I would say out of all of them that we've looked at, it's probably my favorite. Okay. All right. So, yeah, the jury has adjourned. And now we're going to go ahead and take this one long and kind of see where it goes. And that's that. So, let's go ahead and wrap up our stream. And we're going to now move into the traders' talk of our session of our stream. The purpose of our traders' talk is to get any feelings, a recap of the stream, any ideas we feel like we need to drop on you guys. So, I can go ahead and start it. So at least for me, uh, the two most important things I want you guys to understand is that you have to plan, plan, plan. Anything that you do, you have to create a roadmap, create what you're going to, your loss, your profit, what you're willing to risk. You have to understand what type of trader you are to be able to tackle the market. Because if you don't even know what type of trader you are, you don't even know where or what type of strategies to use because different strategies align with the type of trader you are example for me since i use flag poles support and resistance i know i'm a short-term trader i'm a little riskier than tiberius maybe tiberius may be a more conservative trader where he won't risk as much yeah. because he would rather get in and out secure his profits and go me i'm more of a riskier trader and understand that when you risk you gain more and that people do crazy, like Tiberius said, people do crazy things when money is involved. So if you understand the market and understand emotions, you should be good. So Tiberius, you want to piggyback off that? Yeah, I think uh, understanding your emotions is absolutely a, a very important thing that you need to look for when it comes to market trading, because it's not just all about the trading part. You also have to have a very good mental stance because when it comes to money, 
when you live trade, like me and Darren can both attest to this, live trading is way different than demo. The charts mm -hmm. may be the same, but how they feel mm -hmm. is completely different. Feel totally different. So I think it is very important to be able to find control in your emotions. And I think a lot of that control comes from just being confident in what you know. Like me and Darren, we've been studying these charts for so long that we know the emotional decision is usually the one that's going to lead you astray. Because mm -hmm. more, more, let's say you're in an uptrend, the most emotional decision you can make is probably going to come when prices are at a high. You're going to say, man, I, I just feel like I got to buy it right now. But looking at the chart, you would say, oh, it's at the highest high. I can't buy it because fundamentally I have to buy low and sell high. No matter what the situation is, that's what I have to do. Because over time, we've learned that that's usually what works. The emotional decision is going to feel good in a moment like, oh, yes, OK, I got in. But come time later, you're going to say, ah, oh, I'm an idiot. I knew I wasn't supposed to buy at the highest high, but I did it anyway. So having that emotional discipline helps you say, you know what? Even though I want to buy it right now, I'm not going to buy at a high. I'm going to wait for prices to pull back, test the last high. And then once I see that, that's when I get in. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It's always trades coming. If you miss this one, the chart is still going to be there tomorrow. It's going to be there tonight, the next day, the next month, the next year, whatever. Market's not going anywhere. So you don't have to rush to try and get a trade. Just be patient. I think that's a, a really important aspect of trading. It really is. Right, right. So understanding the type of trader you are so you have to know yourself you have to know how much you're willing to risk when it comes time to start losing money and you want to begin to see where your take profits are you have to find a road map a destination because the worst thing to do is to hop into a car don't have no gas <laughs> Nothing. and just start driving anyone can tell you if you own a car and have no gas and you're just driving that is the most scariest thing in the world because you just don't know where or when your car is going to cut off so you want to have a plan so i hope you guys took notes and really paid attention and understand that trading can be very very profitable it can be it could actually make you very wealthy but all the like the all the great traders say this does not happen overnight it's not about the amount of money you make. It's about the it's about the amount of pips and setups, great setups that you execute. Exactly. Because like Tiberius said, they kind of go hand in hand. If you always take the great or the best setups, the money is bound to happen because it's a bypass. I'm sorry, about to say a bypass. That <laughs> that's a, a byproduct of taking great trades. The money will come. So we want to always try to emphasize here, we don't focus on money. We try to focus on percent gains and pips here. The money will come. You know that you're making money, so you don't need to prove to us that we're making money. We just know how the market moves because we've been searching it for so long. So Tiberius, do you have anything else to say before I wrap us up out of here? Yeah, just to harp on that point, I think, everybody should just study markets if you want to make money in these markets practice study and work hard that's what it takes whether and this is, this could be a uh, information that you take not only for trading but for anything in life if you want to be good at it you have to put the work in you have to practice and you have to do your due diligence if you do all of those things you have a very good chance of being successful and whatever you want to do in this case in this scenario is trading and that's the message that we want to leave you with we just wanted to make sure that everybody who came here learned something. We gave you guys about two hours worth of game. We hope that you enjoyed it. You know, we got a lot of good stuff coming up. We have trading classes on the way. We have different informational sessions that we have coming up. And we just want to keep it going and keep spreading the knowledge that we have for you guys. All right. So I want to actually say two important points before I wrap us up out of here. First, to piggyback off you said, Yes, you have to study. Let's think about it. Anything in life. How long does it take to get a bachelor's? It takes four years. How long does it take to master's? Four years plus two years. That's six years. How long does it take to be a doctor? 
It takes your four years plus your two years in like residency and then another something. No, you got to take four years in, in college. You got to take two years in medical school. Then you have to do like a year or two in residency before you actually even work. So anything in life that requires or that people make a lot of money in those fields require a lot of studying and years of dedication. You're not going to just pick up or look at a chart and start making money. That's just not what this is. This is not that. This is a game of strategic movement, chess, not checkers. Exactly. And last point I want to say is like Tiberius said, we got a lot of great things coming to you guys. Another section of the, of the show we want to try to add or part of the bison trading show we want to add is bison trading live. So we're going to have the bison trading show and we're going to have bison trading live. And that's where me and Tiberius is actually going to go over live trades that we've taken that I know a lot of people want to see that us actually in the mist, getting our hands dirty, rolling up our sleeves and getting busy. So I know a lot of people want to see that and it's coming soon. So just to wrap us up out of here, man, please hit that follow button. Please hit that subscribe button, man. Twitch.tv slash Bison Trading. Again, Twitch.tv slash Bison Trading. My name is D Guys, aka Pearl Financial. You can follow me on IG at I at I am oh wait, I am D G U Y at I'm the D Guy or my business page at Pearl, P-E-A-R-L underscore financial underscore LLC. Or you can hit my man Tiberius up at man. Drop your links. Hit me up at Tytrace Future on Instagram. That's T-Y-T-R-A-D-E-S Futures on Instagram. That's a, that's a page where I document my journey because I'm on my journey to get my Series 3 license in order to become a commodity trading advisor. That's basically a person that manages futures the same way that uh, a money manager would manage 401ks or manage stocks for people. What I would do is I would do the same thing just with futures. And over there on the Thai Trades Futures page, I document my journey and I document all of the trades that I take on the Dow Jones Industrial, Industrial Futures. And every week I do a series called The Trade of the Day. And in that lesson, I break down all types of game that you should get hit to when it comes to trading and it's really informative, so make sure you scoot over there, give me a follow, drop a comment, tell me what you like, and just link up with me. And, you know, we really appreciate everybody for coming out tonight. Make sure you follow us, like D said, twitch.com slash the bison trading show. And we have a lot of great stuff coming. We hope everybody has a great weekend and happy holidays to you. Christmas is coming up real soon. All right. All right, again, guys, catch us next week, Tuesday, same time, same place, twitch.tv slash bison trading. Hit that follow button. Peace. All right, y'all. Be easy.